Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on what part of the world you are in. Uh, today's live stream, I just had to go do the counting on my phone a second ago. Apparently, this is number 19, so I feel like we have to do something special for a 20th, but I will get there soon enough. Um, apparently, somebody's discovered a helicopter. It's either that or they have a bit of a strong headwind. Uh, for those of you who are going to be joining us this morning, uh, we are sitting here in uh, lovely northwest uh, Norway. Uh, this is Vigra, Echo November Alpha Lima. Again, anybody who wants to come join us today, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, easy way to do that, of course, is if you set your stuff to the East USA server, uh, doing that's pretty simple. You just tap escape, click up top. You just set that over to East USA. And like I said, if you want to come join us, I'll be kind of leading the way here. Unfortunately, uh, my skill with uh, Norway's uh, geography as well as history is not nearly as good as it is, but I do know how to find where the really, really cool fjords are. So we're definitely going to check those out today. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So this is, uh, we're taking out the Beach G58 today. Uh, the Baron, of course, uh, for those of you who are fans of Flight Simulator, uh, this thing goes back ages. Um, fun story, uh, when I was learning to fly several years ago, they kept a Baron in the same hangar with the Cessna 172. Me, not thinking, of course, I climbed inside the Cessna 172 and pressed the flaps down button, not realizing that the flaps were right in front of the radar on the Baron. Uh, I think you know how that story ended. <laughs> it's kind of not so good, but uh, stuff like that happens more often than you'd like it to. Go ahead and give myself some quick prime. All right, that should be pretty good. I don't think I'm needed anymore. Down you go. There we go. Switch that switch off. Go ahead and turn on my bacon light. Crack the throttle just a teeny tiny bit. I'm going to go ahead and bring my cow flaps to about 50%. It's pretty brisk today, so I'm not too concerned with overheating or anything like that. Getting all my warning lights kicking on right now. Uh, someone from Norway. Oh, this is so awesome. Um, so I'm joined by someone named uh, Ivo Delada. Delita, I'm so sorry I mispronounced your name, but um, I would love for you to give us some trivia. I will ask some questions, and uh, apparently this is so cool because I'm going to have an extra tour guide today. Yes! Success. I love it. Thank you so much for being here today. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get everything started here. Um, everything looks pretty good. I'm going to look around and make sure I'm not going to chop it. Oh, <laughs> you're so chopped. Let's go ahead and uh, come down to my start. I'm going to jam the little switch in. I just sit here and crank. Nice start. Go ahead and crank the second one. Make sure I'm going to chop up everybody on that side. All right, looks pretty good. There we go. Delightful. All right, give my engine just a few minutes to go ahead and warm up a little bit here. Now, the incredible thing is uh, these are still pretty old school like homing engines. Obviously, they're the fuel injective version, hence the fuel pumps. I'm not going to worry about it too, too much. I'm going to go ahead and pop on my pitot heat here. Probably not going to run into too much ice today unless I hit the water or something along those lines. All right, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at my clock here. Uh, we got about two minutes to get to the runway. I think that's uh, more than enough time. But before I do that, I'm go ahead and flip on my other avionics. I'm going to press the enter key. I believe it preloaded my plane. Uh, we're going to be staying pretty low today on account of the fact that the most beautiful things are uh, when you can actually see them. Go ahead and release my parking brake. Sorry about the creek, but this plane will creak just as much, I'm sure. How you guys doing? All right, let's get this thing ripping here. Uh, let's see who if I recognize anybody here. Uh, I recognize uh, Simon, who's uh, flying around in the Cessna 28. I feel like I've seen these two before, but I don't remember the names. Apologies. Uh, we definitely have is in is a flying helicopter. I know it looks like an airplane in a headwind, but I'm pretty confident that it is a helicopter. I really got to check it out. And uh, we also have a Belize and Dr. Magic, I believe I have seen in the past as well. <laughs> I'm not going to ask anything like that because that'd just be silly. All right. So the great thing about this aircraft is that we have more than enough horsepower to take a midfield takeoff here. So I'm actually going to take advantage that and uh, take off right into the uh, dangerous direction here. Go ahead and pause. I can see uh, somebody's coming down the approach here. All right, I'm just going to let them kind of clear out. I'm not going to go all the way down the hot runway here. That would just take too much time. All right, I'll wait until that dream club gets out of her thing. Afternoon. Oh, watch out, sir. I, I, I own this part of the runway. Oop, going into the grass. Nice. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing going. All righty, let's go to my transponder. I'm going to flip it onto altitude mode. And everything else is looking pretty good. Make sure all my settings are good. I'll make sure my mixture is set correctly. I usually use the fuel pump on takeoff with this one, just in case something bad happens. Usually I don't have that problem, but I'm clicking on just in case. Just in case. I'm going to go and check the uh, approach, which has got tons of people on it. But like I said, I'm not going to take the time to back taxi all the way down. But what I am going to do is I'm going to smoothly push the throttle all the way forward. Now, unfortunately, I'm one of those people who only have the uh, single throttle, so I can't make the uh, engines go at different speeds. And you can go, whoa, 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 whoa. It's kind of fun if you get the two engines out of phase with each other. Man, does this thing have some pickup. Lift the nose up. Excuse me. Sorry, sir. Landing gear come up. Go ahead and reduce the power just a teeny tiny bit. I'll need to be ripping that aggressively. Nice. And we are on our way once again. Go ahead and take myself a nice gentle right turn here. I'll go ahead and reduce my speed, let everybody get caught up for those of you who I still need to take off. 
Now, the interesting thing is, as uh, far as my knowledge of Norway goes, like I was mentioning a moment ago, uh, not definitely not an expert. Um, I'm familiar with uh, some of the geography of it, a little bit of the general history of it. And, uh, of course, you know, when I'm looking around, just looking out the window, this reminds me a lot of western Alaska. So I think it's actually neat that if you keep the latitude similar, you end up with fairly similar terrain as well. So that's actually pretty slick. Go ahead and take my nice gentle turn here and let everybody go ahead and get all caught up. Man, is this thing high performance playing. Holy smokes, you think this would be an extra 300 or something like that. All right, we got Dreamed Claws. We got above uh, Diamond, uh, 750. We're going to keep our altitude relatively low today. Uh, we are going to have to outclimb a mountain at some point, but uh, I'm not going to worry about that too, too long. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm swinging around here. Ah, I just love this thing. It's just so, so responsive. All right, you go ahead and spit us out. I was thinking of taking the Diamond out today, but he actually decided against it. All right, now we are on our way. I'm going to get up to about 800 feet or so. I'll go ahead and reduce my RPM a little bit. I'm seeing that I'm painfully in the red here. I'll give myself a little bit of upward trim. Everything looks pretty good. Landing gear up. All right, let's back this out. The uh, POH says we can get anywhere up to 2,600 RPM, but 2,600 RPM is kind of deafening, so I'm going to reduce it gently to 2,500. And I'm going to go ahead and get ourselves an altitude of about, like I said, around 800 feet or so. All right, off we go. I always thought it was interesting in the um, FS-10, uh, Flight Simulator 10, I should say, when you're in this aircraft, if you did any adjustments at all to the propeller pitch, the plane would go, whoa, 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 for like 30 seconds afterwards. Don't have to worry about that in this version. Give myself a little bit of trim here. Let's hope I don't have to practice feathering anything today. And we are on our way. You can see these are really, really small places. Uh, great time of year to come up here, by the way. Uh, it seems like the snow isn't going to be nearly as aggressive as I kind of expect it to be. But then again, uh, it's probably still a little cool outside. Yeah, definitely reminds me of the United States uh, Northwest or, uh, like I said, Alaska as well. Go ahead and push the nose down here. Set a little bit of trim. About 1,000 feet's not too, too bad. Set myself to cruise power. We want to get about 25 inches or so. I don't want to be ripping too far. Some people do have to catch up to me at some point. Just a few. Looks good. Oh, man, this aircraft. It's just, it's so polite. And I also can't believe I'm getting a cruise speed of about 185 indicated right now. That's just like, it's too much airplane. All right, I'm going to flip on the automatic pilot for a second. I'm going to come down here and adjust my cow flaps. I do not need to be uh, leaving those cow flaps open at speeds like this. All right, looking good. Oh, good idea to go ahead and flip my CDI over to GPS mode. And we can always flip over our fuel tanks into cross feed if we wanted to, but I'm not really worried about it. Fuel pumps come off. Go ahead and turn my lights on so people behind you can see a little bit better. And let's see how everybody's doing back there. Oh, no. I think I got ahead of everybody again. I'll go ahead and I'll reduce speed down to 150 knots for a minute just to let everybody get kind of caught up. All right. Man, does this thing slow down fast. I love it. It's just, oh, it's so smooth. I know I'm gushing here, but like, it's just, it's just so nice. All right, slow down for a moment. Let everybody kind of get caught up to me. I see a uh, TPM. That was a good choice, Dr. Magic. Welcome back, by the way. Uh, let's see here. Beach 58, great choice. Beach 58, a Cessna 208. I think that's uh, Simon way, way, way back there. Dream Claw. I'm just trying to get a general idea. I love these little red lines of the propellers, by the way. That's a great touch. Yeah, it looks pretty good. looks pretty good. All right, so we're going to be entering into Fjord territory in uh, just a few minutes. Uh, basically, what's going to happen is we're going to proceed along here, kind of zigzag through this, and you're going to start noticing mountains that are basically going to be valleys with water in the bottom of this. Uh, for those of you who uh, joined us ages ago when we were uh, flying inside the Rocky Mountains, you're going to see very, very similar terrain. The uh, biggest difference, of course, being the fact that you have extremely deep water in these valleys, whereas uh, when we were over in the Rocky Mountains, yeah, there was some water down there usually, but they weren't nearly as crazy as it was. Uh, one thing I'm seeing here, here, it was quite a bit of as you got nice smooth mountains that's indicative of glaciation which is again you can imagine as time went on and the ice ages went by you probably had quite a few of this, these things being formed but like i said not an expert i'm just making assumptions based on what i can see here i'm uh, just kind of zipping out getting a little bit of turbulence from the ridges which i think is a great detail i'm gonna go ahead and bring my power back up i think at this point most people caught back up to me yeah, 25 inches and 2500 rpm is pretty much the universal power setting for any general aviation plane myself a little bit of nose down. I'm really, really pleased that Microsoft's last patch really fixed up a lot of that stuttering issues we were having with the patch that broke all flaps, which I'm sure everybody is very familiar with. All right, looks pretty good. Yeah, that turbulence is getting me bounced around pretty good, but I do want to take a look behind me real fast. 
All right, we got the Pilot B and the Diamond 62. I really hope you can keep up uh, Pilot B. That's got to be tough. Of course, uh, when we do our canyon turn towards the end and we have to uh, desperately get out of there, we'll see exactly how that goes. Go ahead and kill that. Come on down this way. All right, so our first major turn is going to be basically a straight head on a right. Uh, we're basically going to be following this fjord right down. I'll pass the uh, town of Stordal, which again, like I said, my pronunciation is going to be absolutely garbage. But I'll be corrected about 100 times, so I'm not worried about it too much. As long as I don't imitate any accents, then I should be okay. <laughs> All right, get us nice and leveled out here. Yeah, I'm just using trim here. This aircraft has a gentle, a gentle right turning tendency, which is apparently in the real plane, it's much worse. But it does trim out pretty nicely. A little bit of that, and I'll let go for a second, see how my trim's going. Eh, not bad, not bad. All right, let's see anybody any fighter jets today. I'm looking behind me. Nope, somebody's slowing. <laughs> I always love that. Turn my back for one second and look at my trim. All right, let's head in. So my understanding is in this particular one, uh, the name of the study again, please. Um, I will spell it. I'm not going to try to say it. Um, S-T-O-R-D-A-L. Fortunately for me, I have my little map printed out on my kneeboard here, so I can kind of work out where some of the key things are. All right. Take a look at the back. Nicely done, Endolf. Oh, you're doing solid formation flying there. Uh, one of the fun things I always love to do is do one of these. Oh, is it going to let me do it? Oh, I can't jump in the back seat. Ah, bummer. Give myself a little bit of trim to the right, but everything else is looking pretty good. Whoa. Whoa. Hmm. If this was our helicopter from before, that is one fast helicopter. Nice. I'm glad I'm not flying through these uh, valleys here in any sort of situation where you have low visibility, because that would be dangerous. Of course, we've got all the electronics of the world to help us out here. Check out behind me. Just look over my wing. And Dolph, you're doing a great job there. I was like, you have the world's teeny tiniest little trim tab for the aileron. Love it. Little details like that. Now, this is what I came to see. Look at how steep this mountain is. This is incredible. I'm just like sort of visualizing it again. Oh, sure. Um, so Lake Majules is asking, how do you use aileron trim? So you got three trims on an airplane. I'm gonna, Hopefully I'm not talking down to you. I'm sorry. But basically, you have one for up and down, which is elevator. You have one for roll, which is your aileron trim. And you have one for your rudder as well. That's going to be your yaw trim. You have to be careful that you're not accidentally correcting roll when you're supposed to be correcting yaw. So what I mean by that is if you actually come down on your display and you look right here on the left, you notice that this little needle here is showing my aircraft is slightly out of coordination. I'm actually skidding to the left a little bit. If I were to actually push my left rudder, I can actually get this centered nice and evenly, which is the way it wants to be flying. I'm also noting when I'm kicking my rudder, that the plane is gently starting to turn to the left, which actually means we're not dealing with rudder trim here, um, aileron trim rather. We're actually dealing with a rudder trim problem. Now, this is a common misunderstanding. It's uh, something I've done about a thousand times. Again, you can fix a rudder trim problem with aileron trim, but technically in the real plane, you'd be flying sideways. But everybody's a little different. Oh, look at this view right here. So anyway, um, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to set up controls so that you can press the aileron trims. Uh, the way that I have it set up is I have one button in the middle of my joystick that if I go up or down, that's uh, going to be my elevator trim. If I push it left and right, that's going to be my aileron trim. The trick to aileron trim is get your speed the way it needs to be and then fits with it really, really gentle one touch at a time. On this aircraft, there actually is an aileron trim located right here. I know it says it's 0 0.1 degrees, but for me, it's actually like minus 0.1. You can actually come down here and with the mouse, wheel this thing if you want to. The uh, safer option, of, whoa, look what I've done to my trim. The safer option, of course, is to actually go ahead and uh, set up a control that actually does it. Um, is anybody familiar with the actual keyboard combination that does aileron trim? Awesome. So um, Evo is just saying his family lives not far from here. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Oh man, did I mess up my aileron trim? Oi! There we go. Nice. All right, gonna come swing across the water. As long as we're 800, 500 feet above the ground where there's no people below us, so we're technically legal. I'm showing about 550, so we're more than nice enough. Yeah, this is an aileron trim problem, and I goofed it up pretty bad. Yeah, you can see how much extra trim I need now. 
So anyway, the basic technique for aileron trim is trim yourself for speed first. If you find you're having to pull back or push forward, you're never going to get your aileron trim smooth. Uh, what you want to do is get your elevator set nice and smooth, then start fitting with your aileron trim. It doesn't take much to get the aircraft from rolling on its own. And again, different aircraft have different properties. Um, I think we have a Spitfire now, if I was reading the um, Microsoft Flight Simulator news. So that's going to need a tremendous amount of aileron trim. And obviously, if you get something like a BF-109 or something, we're going to need that as well. All right, let's take a look behind us. We got the Pilot B. We got tons of folks. It's always great to see everybody. Zoom in out just a little bit. All right, we're going to be taking a right down here. Now, this is going to take us through one of our first uh, proper fjords here. Right now, like, I can't believe they can get cruise ships in here. But, like, I'm looking around, and, like, the scale of everything is a lot bigger than I had expected. Now, I'm right across at our first waypoint here. We're going to go ahead and take a right. I'm not going to take a right right over the mountains. Instead, I'm going to just kind of follow right inside here. And this is just amazing. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> I don't know. That, that, that brings my brain just a little bit. All right. Let's go ahead and take our right here. We're actually going to be traveling down to the Geringer Ford, which I probably pronounced horrifically, but um, that is one of the most famous and uh, notable fjords of uh, all Norway. Now, just look at this. <laughs> Could you imagine uh, taking a little powerboat up and down here? Uh, this plane is a Baron G58. Now, this is one of the aircraft that comes with the uh, Deluxe Edition, I think. It's either Deluxe or Premium. I'm not sure which one it is. Basically, what you did is you took your Beechcraft Bonanza. You took the motor off the nose. You put one on the left wing. You put one on the right wing. That was reversed. And uh, you basically have yourself a Baron. If you actually look in the back seat of this, it's exactly the same as you would expect for this kind of an aircraft. Copy. All right, and I'll give everybody a really, really slick trick, by the way. If you're ever trying to trim the airplane, if you want to make your life a lot simpler, zoom in. So what will happen is any changes to the pitch of the aircraft become very obvious. For example, if it was out of trim going up, you'd see the nose very gently coming up like that. If I had any issues with the uh, pitch trim or aileron trim, you'd see it going like this. And because you're so zoomed in, it makes it tremendously easy to see exactly how you're out of pitch. Like right now, I can see that I'm drifting downwards just a tiny bit, which is probably going to mean when I look down here that this is going to suddenly show. Yeah, you can actually see it already kicking in. So again, it's a great, great technique if you struggle finding that last couple touches of uh, trim there okay so the way this one works is like i said we're coming up on the jerry and you forward and basically we're going to take a left hand turn and we're going to zip down this fjord it is uh, like i said the most when i did my research a little earlier this week apparently it is the most known of all the fjords and of course uh, when we're going to go out of it we're going to have to out climb a mountain so uh, make sure you keep your speed up when you're coming out as well you can always canyon turn and come around as well but that's fine let's see how we're doing we got our little helicopter catching up here we got above diamond uh, excellent I imagine if we had this many planes flying through here in the real world, um, they get a little nervous. <laughs> All right. Um, in Cagnito, is the cruise faster than Bonanza? Um, so the answer is yes to both questions. Um, at the end of the day, this is a light twin airplane, which means if we lost an engine, we still would be able to barely climb. But at the end of the day, is it, it's going to be better off than if we uh, just had a single engine. Most people buy this plane because they want that little bit of safety. So for example, if you're flying over water, like us right now, you would never want a single engine plane because it's just darn right dangerous. With that extra engine, if I do lose one, at least I have a little bit of redundancy. Um, if you have any familiar encounters Cognito with the Diamond 62. Uh, if you've ever seen a Diamond 40, which is basically um, you know, a four-seater trainer plane, the 62, we're just going to take the same engine and do the same exact arrangement, splitting them left and right. Uh, well, this is a very popular plane. It's also known as the Doctor Killer for anybody who's curious because anybody has got real money buys one of these things and doesn't realize just how dangerous they can be. All right. Again, I'm not an automatic pilot. I've just taken my time to trim. What we should do is crank up the wind to make all the water get really, really choppy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Simon, I was just mentioning the fact that he's actually been on a cruise ship down here. This is like, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, that's a little intimidating how tall these things are. Huh. I can get this thing, um, I'm doing a $1.92 with uh, correct cruise settings right now, so uh, this thing can certainly move. But again, two engines, double the drag too, don't forget that problem. All right, let's do it. The most famous fjord of Norway. One of these days, I got to get up here. I'm going to go ahead and stick my head out the window. Oh, it looks like somebody's meeting us there today. And here we are. Uh, 
Oh, um, Gary's asking, do I do this often? I do these every two weeks. So this is, like I said, this is number 19 for us. Uh, basically, we just pick a theme and we just kind of go with that. I usually ask people. If you're looking for how you can find me, if you subscribe and you have notifications on or whatever it is, I usually post these the Tuesday before we do them and it'll pop up. But the safest place in the universe to check is always to just go on my community page on YouTube. I post at least once a week and I usually let everybody know kind of what's going on inside of things like that. Look at this. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> I can't get over how big all that. Oh, that's that that's pretty beautiful right there. All right, flight simulator, you got me on this one. And uh, thanks, Eric. That's very helpful. Oh man, we definitely got to visit the gift shop when we get to the base of this. I'm actually doing a little bit of fingertip flying here, but uh, I think my trip was a little off from this turn. Oh man, look at that. Uh, incognito asks, is what input? Is this your, sorry. Oh, welcome to a long week of work. Um, so I have a VKB Gunfighter 3. Uh, that's the MCG Ultimate Grip, in case you're curious. That's my primary stick. It was really expensive, but I played enough flight simulators that it was my treat to myself one year. Uh, for my throttle, I have a Thrustmaster TWCS. And for my rudder pedals, I have the Thrustmaster. They're called Combat Pedals. I don't think they make them anymore, uh, but they do work pretty darn good. What I've been trying to do is hope that uh, either VKB will go ahead and release their next throttle, or um, we'll see the, what is the one, oh, oh my gosh, I can't remember, the Warthog come back as a throttle because, man, I really wish I had a nicer one. One of these days, one of these days. <laughs> I feel sorry for the cruise ship trying to get around this corner. Oh, look at this! Yeah, how do you drive to that house? Come on. All right, let's go swing around this way. A little bit of right foot here. Whoop. I pitched that one up just a little too much. Nice and gentle. And we are coming right to the base of this. This is where my geography fails me a little bit here, but I'm looking straight ahead, and I can see a couple of rivers going down there. There's a little tiny town. And uh, bad news, everybody. We're going to have to outclimb a mountain. So uh, if you take a look right on our right, our, our next flight plan is actually going to be taking us up there. Setting up a trim to an axis versus a button, you're absolutely right, Eric. That's uh, something my old yoke actually had, where you could have a little wheel on it, and you could adjust the wheel to adjust the trim. It will, it, you're right, you're absolutely right, it changes your life. I just don't have any axes left to use. All right, I'm going to push the throttle all the way forward. I'm going to bring my RPM all the way up. And we're going to try it. I'll climb it on. Here we go. The climb speed, for those of you who are also in a Baron, uh, don't try to exceed, uh, don't try to go under 100 knots, otherwise you're just going to run out of room. You do want to try to keep your speed up, though, because as soon as you start slowing down, uh, you're going to run out of trim as well. And not trim, uh, you're going to start increasing your drag as well, which is actually going to hurt you. Um, the honeycomb yoke. You know, I was looking at the honeycomb yoke and the throttle. I have no room on my desk for the throttle. I was really hoping for something like that, but I didn't think I was going to be able to make it work for me. All right, we're down to 120 knots. This is bad. Go ahead and clean my mixture up a little bit here. All right, we can now climb the mountain. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. By the way, the steeper your turn, the less energy you're going to have to outclimb the mountain. So don't overdo it. We're not a fighter jet, which I hate to say it. Um, there's some fighter aircraft out there, trainers, that have less performance than this thing, I swear. We can actually sneak through that little gap right there if we had to, but that's all right. <laughs> Whoa! That's some uh, turbulence that you get from ridge lift right there. I'm actually looking right over my right. Uh, we don't want to get below the blue line, because uh, that means if we lose an engine, we can't control ourselves. I mean, I can't control myself anyway, but that's besides the point. Oh, I got past. <laughs> nice job, Dreamclaw. I feel sorry for anybody who's, like, flying, like, uh, the diamond right now. They're going to be going, uh, getting a little slow. Hey, we did it. Nice. Kind of reminds me of in Papua New Guinea, but uh, all the mountains have snow on them. Nice. Nice. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm actually going to come to the uh, west just a tiny bit. I'm going to go ahead and reduce my power. I'm going to go reduce my RPM. And back these out to about 2,500. 25 inches. Ah, I can't even get 25 inches up here. We're up too high. That's all right. Go ahead and creak my mixture a little bit. Nice. Oh, I'd love. I actually have uh, the MFDs from uh, Thrustmaster, I think, makes them. And there's these little buttons. I custom printed my own, and like I have a button for everything on it. And they're like, you know, like little, like, like almost like a fighter jet or something like that. It's just kind of cool. All right. Now we're uh, cruising through the mountains here. I think we lost everybody. <laughs> Sorry about that mountain. 
All right, we actually want to kind of hang to the west. So uh, what you're going to see in just a minute is is going to be a pretty distinctive little valley. It's going to be this one right here, if my uh, geography skills uh, serve me well. The safest place for us to go is actually along this valley, kind of right off that left-hand side. And zoom out a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. Look at these mountains. Oh, man. This reminds me of when we were down in New Zealand also, when you just had these beautifully rounded off mountains with these little lakes kind of occupying every single little spot. Um, I'm not a fishing person, but I um, imagine the fishing's probably pretty good. We'd have to ask Evo. Or Ivo. I probably got that wrong. I'm sorry. All right, we're just going to zip down this little valley real quickly here. Getting a little high in the airspeed, though. I'm going to back my throttle down a little bit. I know this seems like we're a little bit off course, but uh, we're going to get a much nicer view when we come around the corner. Too bad this thing doesn't have speed brakes. And uh, for the person who was asking about aileron trim earlier, see how bad my rudder trim is right now? No good. Oh, I just got passed. Ah, TBM. That was the good choice for this one. You could easily outclimb these hills with that. I think I got 3,200 feet per minute in the TBM the other day in a nice cold day. That is just, ah, it's crazy. All right, let's go down. So, uh, how, blah, blah, blah. so now that I have this throttle, I need to learn how to manage the mixture. I do have two tutorials on mixture, actually. Uh, one tutorial is dedicated to basically how to do it the manual way. And the other one is, whoa! And the other one is uh, going to be dedicated to how to do it kind of the old-fashioned, tricky way. Did I just lose my right engine? Nope, I just hit a bump. <laughs> that scared me. That's what I get for not paying attention to my airspeed. Um, so Gary, so basically, uh, da, 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 hold on, let me see if I start from the top here. So incognito asks, I need to do learn about the mixture. So the easiest thing with the mixture is actually to get the auto mixture function that comes in Microsoft. I know you're like, what's the point of mixture if you're going to do it automatically? But the real way to do mixture on a, a plane like this is you need an exhaust gas temperature gauge, but unfortunately we don't have one of those. So you'd have to actually set the mixture the hard way. And if you give me a minute to kind of like level myself off, I'll show you how to do it the hard way. Let me just uh, get myself a little bit low down here. Look at this. This is amazing. Can't get the cruise ship in here, though, because we're kind of landlocked, as you'll see in a second. Bring up my RPM again. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm just looking around going, I hate to be here when it's snowy. I'm not the world's biggest fan of the cold, as probably everybody knows, even though I live in a relatively cold place, but that's okay. All right, I'm going to bring my power back up to 25 inches. I'm going to go ahead and uh, activate my automatic pilot. Uh, let me level my airplane off a little bit first. Get us back up to 500 feet. All right, autopilot on. Okay, let's do it. So uh, when you're going to set the uh, mixture the old-fashioned way, let me go ahead and enrich my mixture all the way. So this is how you would do it in the old days. If we had no exhaust gas temperature gauge, which we don't in this one, what you'd have to do is you'd have to take a look right at your RPM as well as your manifold pressure. What's going to happen is uh, you're going to go start with fuel and you're going to back the mixture up a little teeny tiny bit at a time. So what's going to happen is when you hit the correct mixture, the RPM is going to spike because the engine's going to have to catch up to its newfound horsepower. So you keep just kind of pulling it. It'll suddenly go up. And once it spikes like that, what you're going to do is you're going to pull the mixture out just a couple more clicks back from that point. Point, and then you're pretty much good to go. You have to set your mixture every uh, 1,000 feet typically, and uh, usually that works out pretty well. But the safest thing for me though is in Microsoft Flight Simulator, there's a button you can push, and it'll actually go ahead and set that for you. You'll notice that the automatic mixture will not agree with the manual mixture. Although something weird just going on with the mixture. Let me see something here. Interesting. That is not how that works. So usually what happens is your RPM comes up. Watch this. Nope, that went down, so we went too far. There it is, right there. It peaks, and that's how you know you've got the right spot. Then you just back it up a little bit from there. But like I said, if you do our Microsoft's version, they're going to do it up here. And like I said, you can see the RPM actually dropped. So I find that mixture to be a little too rich. I do have a video on it that goes into a little more detail with both techniques. Again, I'm just, I like Microsoft method because it works. Um, let's see, more questions here. So the throttle mixture, yes, like I said, there's a video tutorial. Check that out. I go into more detail. Um, have you seen the Stream Deck? I have seen the Stream Deck. Uh, that's actually a pretty cool piece of equipment there. Um, was there another question uh, somebody was asking here? AP panel, uh, have you seen the uh, fish and cabin? Okay, cool. Yeah, the community page is the best place to go. All right, enough chit-chat. We got work to do. On mag pilot off. Let's go swing over to the left here. Oh, jeez. There's a lot of folks behind me. And Dolph, you are an amazing formation pilot. I am absolute doo-doo at that. All right, so now we're going to be coming out to, this is called the Invik Fjorden. 
which is uh, going to be right out here. This one's, uh, again, a fairly well-known one as well. You can get a ship in here because uh, you can take this all the way out into the ocean. I'm going to come swinging out this way. And the other thing I want to say to incognito about mixture is a lot of modern airplanes, the mixture is automatic. You don't even have to touch it. Copy. Copy. All right, swinging out. Oh, look at this. Oh, man, this is so cool. Like I said, this is the Invic Fjordan, which, again, my pronunciation, like I've already said, it's going to be garbage. But just look at the scale. This is definitely not nearly as tall as the one we saw a little while ago. But again, I imagine the Rocky Mountains, if somebody filled it up with a bunch of water, and that's literally what we got here. Come swing back down. We're going a little fast here, but as long as I don't stay in the yellow, nothing bad should come about it. Oh, I love this. Look at that. Okay, so I love your little house here, but how on earth do you... Oh, you take a boat, don't you? And that's the little boathouse. Ah, it's, nope, there's a road. I take it back. Yeah, I feel sorry for the guy who's got to plow that one. Exactly, Gary. That's exactly right. It's much tougher in a plane without any GT. All right, going to swing around this way. We're going to come up in the Galapa Forden, which is going to be coming right up on here on the left. Try not to around this corner off too, too much here. <laughs> I'm losing. Like um, a few years ago, my wife and I started learning Swedish, but that's a totally different language. Not Well, not too different, but you know what I mean. I was never good at that either, so... <laughs> All right, I'm noticing uh, some agriculture, which means our mountains must be getting flatter. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and uh, scoop this way. Oh, I love these little towns. Like, it's great, because you imagine there's probably a lot of wooden houses here, because, you know. <laughs> All right, come swing around this way. Oh, this is so cool. We're sneaking up on this character name, uh, Double Y No. Oh, Double Y No, it makes sense when you say it. Ah. Uh... Yes, so Incognito is asking about the... It's actually... You have to be careful. Turboprops have, like, their own language. Generally, that's a condition lever. On a turboprop, what you'll actually have is two different idle settings. Uh, one will be for a low, like, if you're just sitting there on the ramp. Another one will be for high, if you want to, like, taxi, just using your mixture setting. Uh, that's unique to turboprops. Messing with the mixture while you're in flight will do absolutely squat to a turboprop because it has a fuel control unit on board that can do all of that magic for you, basically. So you don't have to worry about it so much. But um, it's just, like I said, it's a little different. Condition lever is exactly what you think. Now, if you really want to get complicated, on the TBM 930, you have what they call a combined power handle, which does all the condition con stuff for you all built into one handle. And uh, I think I have a video on that kicking around somewhere. i give myself a couple knocks. Come zip this way. Hmm. This fjord is just so much lower than we just saw. It feels weird. Like I said, this reminds me of New Zealand, but somebody filled it in. Oh, I'd just love to get my kayak in here and just, like, chill on the coast. That would be absolutely amazing. All right, we're going to be swinging around here. And we're going to be up. Oh, man, I'm not going to even try it. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to be swinging down this way. There's going to be kind of a weird little peninsula. We're going to be taking the second peninsula, and then we're basically going to try to outclimb a valley, which I'm not worried about it too, too much. We should be able to get it safely. Now, um, incognito, if you want to make things too complicated for yourself, there's actually airliners that have a condition switch. Like, I believe the uh, Boeing 7s, uh, the 777 will actually have a high, it'll have a normal, and it'll have a cutoff all in the same switch. So it actually does it a little bit differently. And if you want to go even scary farther back, um, back in the 1950s aircraft, such as uh, the MiG-15, for example, you actually had an adjustable fuel flow lever. So when you started the thing, you had to actually lift it slowly as the engine's turning to feed it just enough fuel to keep the thing spinning fast enough without basically starting an engine fire coming out the back. It was the most sketchy thing ever. And of course, if you want to get even more and more complicated, <laughs> helicopters have their own sets of mixture controls as well. Uh, let's see, there's a fjord not far away called Ares Fjord, and it's a house or connection to any roads. They used to get to school by boat. I love that. Ah, I love that. Again, sucks when it's snowing, but I guess we don't have school that day. It's just like where I live. Uh, anyway, like I was saying with the mixture, uh, that's, again, very, very complicated depending on what type of aircraft and what kind of engine. And it changes, too, because like I said, with Fadec now, a lot of that's been kind of thrown out the window because it does everything automatically for you. Wow, look at this. Sounds like a hive of angry bees. You get my drift. All right. So for this one, like I said, you're going to see a double opening. Let me actually sit forward and I see here. 
You're actually going to see uh, two openings here in just a moment. Ah! By the way, for anybody looking for a fun little landing, uh, this is an extremely sketchy runway for those people who are looking for that extra little bit of fun. Um, we're actually gonna bypass this runway here. Now, like I said, we're gonna be taking a left in a second. You're gonna see the first opening, which is this valley here, and then you're gonna see the second opening, which is gonna be this valley here. We want the second. It, for those who are being a little bit brave, feel free to climb right up on the mountains and chill up here if you want. But um, for us, I'm gonna take us the nice, uh, try to outclimb the valley kind of a situation here, which makes it pretty easy. All right, I'm gonna back myself up a little bit. I wonder how we're doing for fuel here. I haven't checked that in a while. Eh, fine. Probably haven't even burnt 10% yet. 8%, whatever. Uh, by the way, a uh, question for the audience here. Does anybody have any idea why this shows no values? Nope, John Cena, I believe he's a wrestler, if I recall correctly. He's uh, sporting the longitude there. Good choice, good choice. 2020 is, oh, Gary's asking, my first simulator, learned a ton from your toots. About 300 hours in. Which features are you looking for most uh, updates? Wow. So um, first of all, I hate to be that guy, but I really would like helicopters. I know we have helicopters now. I've seen them. Um, I've played around with it a little bit, but that you know what I mean by helicopters. I would love to see some updates to that. Um, I think that's a huge piece. I'd love to have an airliner that actually has something that's a little bit more meaty to it. Um, I'm really looking forward to add-ons along the lines of, like, if somebody can give us, like, an old DC-7, or they want to give us a Constellation or something along those lines, or if you want to be a little bit weirder, uh, go for, like, a Comet 4C or something like that. I'd love an aircraft like that just to add that little bit of complexity to things to make it kind of fun. Um, other things I'm looking forward to is, obviously, the live traffic doesn't work right yet. I'm sure at some point it will. But um, that's something that needs to change. Um, these avionics, while they're amazing, they're not complete, especially if you're a hardcore IFR pilot. Not that I'm a hardcore IFR pilot, but I do like it when those features are there. Uh, let's see, other things. Um, I hate to say this, but I'd love to see combat. I know that's not going to be a thing, but, you know, I, I could think of how many times I would drop bombs on my house if I had the ability to do so. I'm <laughs> just like that, though. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 2020. Uh, that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. As far as geography, it's beautiful. I love it. I wish it was a little smoother, but um, I love it. Uh, let's see here. In my game, fuel consumption doesn't work anymore. All my settings point out that it should. I have no idea what's going on there, D-Doom. Uh, Aerial Cruise recommends the uh, 727. Um, I agree. I have that for X-Plane. I think it's great. Um, one of the cool things about that plane is, like I said, you can actually damage it if you push the engines too hard. But my favorite part of the 727 is the Chiva, which is an old school inertial navigation system. It's just, oh my god, it, it's so much work to program, and I love stuff like that. Uh, DCS, yeah, I, I play DCS, don't worry. As a matter of fact, you might catch a video in a couple weeks that uh, has some DCS action in it. Because I've been playing with a buddy, and uh, we've been having too much fun. All right, so I don't have a name for this fjord, unfortunately. Uh, I think the one we just passed through was the Galapagos fjord. I can't do it. I'm sorry. And now we're basically going to cruise in along this valley, and we're going to be taking a little highway and then basically shooting straight up through this mountain range to kind of get us out of there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what else we got here? PMDG. Uh, yep, I've done PMDG in the past. I have the DC-6 over an X-Plane, and I love that plane. And VR is like... It, it's just so slow, but it's huge. And I don't know. I love that. For some reason, that, that makes me enjoy it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. I've heard that the team put the CRJ. I'm not even going to touch the CRJ. I, I know that, like, people are probably like, well, you could probably do videos on it. Yeah, I probably could. But, like, the CRJ, it's... I'm not going to lie. It's, it's kind of modern. And it's kind of sl uh, small for me. I don't know why. It's just a personal thing. Of course, if I found one in my lap one day, I'd do videos on it. But that's just me. Uh, let's see what else people have to say. I picked up the Spitfire. Ah, the Spitfire. Uh, we have that one over in DCS. And, oh boy, that, that, that's a full-time job flying that plane. Not nearly as bad as the I-16 over, um, that's that Russian little plane that looks like an engine with a wing on it. Man, the thing's sketchy. Um, did you have the Mad Dog? The MD. Um, for X-Plane, I did have the MD-80, and I actually had a lot of fun with it. I love the old school, like, it's kind of like a mix between new and old, sort of like the 757 is. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to see what other comments we got. Oh, I just got passed. Sorry, I was going too slow for you, John. <laughs> I'm guessing that's uh, with the G91 or something. Or that's the F-15. All right, we're taking a left. I'm actually using my feet to steer here. I'm not actually using the uh, ailerons, if you take a look. Because this is a nice gentle turn. Of course, when you do this, the plane goes into a dive. I'm actually going to go ahead and pull this up just a little bit. All right. 
let's think about uh, getting ourselves ready here. Of course, whenever you're flying in valleys, I've said this a thousand times, you always want to imagine wind traveling over the valley like it's water. So if the wind is coming from the west, for example, imagine it goes down, crashes, and then goes back up. So if you ever need to visualize what part of the valley you need to be on, if you're on the wind side of the valley, the wind pushes you down. If you're on the uh, lee side of the um, I guess we don't really have a lee side, do we? So we have the lee side, we have the wind side. Basically, you want to be on the opposite side of the valley to where the wind is if you want lift as opposed to being pulled down. Now, uh -oh, someone says, OMG, G, 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 I must have said something. Ha, <laughs> ha, Yeah, I think that was like an F-15 or something like that. Although we have the ghost shock now. So, um, tempting, tempting. But of course, we have no carrier ops, so. Oh, getting bounced around here. I believe I just got yelled at about terrain. What's up with that? Actually, you know what's another feature I wish they'd bring into Microsoft? Is the ability to change your plane while flying. That's something the old Microsofts had. I don't know why they felt they needed to get rid of that. All right, time to do some out climbing. Let's do it. Look at this valley. This is incredible. All right, let's go ahead and swing up. Up and over. I'm feeling the turbulence now. That is not me playing with the ailerons or anything. That is actual turbulence. Go ahead and give myself a little bit more mixture there. Keep my engine running smoothly as I climb. Of course, now we're totally out of trim, but that's okay. There we go. Oh, thanks, Drew. I appreciate that. I know in the last couple of weeks, uh, we've been doing stuff that was a lot more technical in nature, but uh, people were asking for it, and honestly, I love technical things. Uh, we'll be having probably several more weeks of that. Oh, there goes John Senna again. But um, again, that will transition back to traditional things. All right, power before pitch, pitch before power. Back to 25 inches, and pull the RPM back to 2,500. Go ahead and swing this one down. Delightful. Uh, good morning, Maxime. Uh, we've uh, seen you before. How's it going, Casey? All right, swing behind. Oh my gosh, look behind me. Hey, this was the right plane to pick. That's the one I should have flown in today. That is such a cool picture. I'm going to steal it just in case I need it for later. All right, this has been a longer flight for us today. Oh, oh, okay. So, um, yeah, so the... <laughs> Um, Gary, usually for me with wind, I'm always going to go ahead and know what the wind is before I fly. But um, you can always switch to this mode. Obviously, option three is the correct mode. But, you know, some people like to make it different and do something like this. But, again, do whatever mode you're comfortable with on this aircraft. Um, usually in flight planning is when you're going to want to set the wind more than anything. And um, when we do some of the stuff with uh, taking fixes in grants advanced navigation coming up in the next couple of weeks, you'll see how you can determine the wind without having a uh, fancy GPS here. Um, let's see, how are you determining? I uh, normally have the wind option in the PFD or the little nav map. Um, sure, that works fine. But like I said, in the real world, you can always call up an ATIS to find out what the wind is. Let's see if there's anybody nearby we can call up. Ah! All right, we'll see if there's anybody that we can call up. Nope. Ah, we're going to have to look up the local ATIS to see if we can actually find one. Oh, there we go. Let's listen to the wind. Nice. So uh, that's one way to method. Obviously, you have to know which one of those uh, frequencies you're actually dialing. So for us, we really need... Oh, my God, I'm not going to be able to do it. Ivo's going to make fun of me again. Uh, Bridge Land, which is an Echo November Bravo Limo that we're coming up in just a minute. We'd have to know that frequency, and they'd have to have an active station at that location. All right. Let's see what we got here. Uh, determining from the windows. Okay, uh, Martin's wishing have an option to send your current flight plan. Yeah... <sighs> Ironically, I can send you my flight plan via Sky Vector, but I can't send you my flight plan via, you know, the uh, more traditional means, like an actual file. wonder if they'll ever add DC. Oh, we were just talking a minute ago, uh, Jay Telly, actually, about this. Um, no, this is not real-world weather. We can check. Not bad. I can work with this. Actually, uh, actually, I think I like the live weather. Let's keep it that way. Whoa! 
You okay there? Have fun. Whoa, just got past. <laughs> all right, now to make our way down. Oh, check this out. I changed the weather, and all of a sudden we can see snow everywhere. Um, Ivo, can you confirm if it looks this way at all? Oh, that's a great point, Wadastay. I didn't even think of that. I'm not a. I don't never seen a f an episode of Game of Thrones in my entire life. I'm not gonna lie here, but um, if I could figure it out, we could probably figure it out. <laughs> All right, let's go. Whoa, I'm getting cut off here. Beep 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 beep. <laughs> Actually, some airplanes do have some basic uh, loud noise capability. Mine is just the engines. All right, I'm gonna come swing around this way. Go ahead and readjust my mixture. So the landing today is gonna to be pretty straightforward. Uh, when we get there, you're going to be seeing it's a 2.5 and it's a runway seven. Uh, for those of you who are old school and wanna use some ADF action, I'm gonna go ahead and flip on my autopilot. Always use autopilot when you're looking down, by the way. Back, uh, da, 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 ADF DME. We can actually go set in the uh, local frequency. It's tree seven four for those of you who are interested. Go ahead and hit this one. Oh, no, not that one. Ah. Of course, I'm going to run out of time before I have a quick chance to actually dial this in. Just for fun. Just for fun. Come on. You're going to let me do it. There we go. Three, seven, four. Is it going to work for me today? Let's go uh, ba, 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 PFD. We're going to do bearing one. Give me ADF. It works. Ha <laughs> ha. Still got it. You can see I've got this little blue line now that's telling me where the airport itself is. <laughs> Go ahead and pop this down. And there is our airport. We made it. Yes. All right. So we're looking to land on 2-5 uh, today. So looking down, you can see that's 2-5. I'm going to do a midfield cross, and then I'm going to come back around and I kind of put us down to the ground. I actually see some spots for helicopters. Those are those uh, kind of concentric circles on the left side. There's a lot of traffic here. Holy smokes. I didn't think uh, people would come out this far. All right. Let's go ahead and pop ourselves into the traffic pattern here. All right. Come on, zing this way. All right, we're just going to take this nice and wide. That is a very dangerous approach because there's literally a mountain right there. All right, nose comes up. Bring our RPM up. Bring our mixture set correctly. We're going to put our first notch of flaps down as well as go ahead and uh, stick down our gear at the same time. Basically, if they're gear down, they're flaps down. Oh, getting a little slow here. That's all right, though. I think you uh, doesn't see comments. I'm not sure what you're saying. I'm sorry, Akar. All right. Just going to kind of line ourselves up there. Uh, this is going to be kind of dangerous. That's all right, though. By the way, if you're looking for the magic speed for this aircraft, pause. <laughs> Never go below the blue line. If we lose an engine and we're below the blue line, it makes it very, very difficult to recover. Oh, I don't like this at all. Pretty sure you're not supposed to be using this runway, but oh well. Honestly, once you get the hang of the traffic pattern and you start doing it by eye and feel versus by look, it becomes so much easier. How's it going, Law Fox? Alright, swing us around. Last notch of flaps, push that throttle all nice and forward. Oops, undershot it. Ah, oh, I failed. Want want try again. Yeah, please don't fly like that in an actual traffic pattern. That was embarrassing, I'm sorry. All right, I'm going to keep our seals right at 100 knots until we're safely over the end of the runway here. I appreciate the fact there are lights in those trees. Uh, that's just kind of a nice little touch. Probably isn't supposed to be that way, but I'm not complaining. All right, we got ourselves a real nice crosswind. I'm going to let the crosswind push me off the runway here. I'm getting a little slow, but that's okay. Whoa! Wind shear. We're going to, have to, hit. We're going to have to be a little firm with this landing here. Oh, bounce. How many landings? Oh, nicely done, Endolf. Nicely done. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no joke, Maxime. See, in the real world, I like the traffic pattern. It's like I abuse it in the game just because I've had to do it so many times in an actual airplane. All right, I'll go ahead and get ourselves ready for our little uh, group picture here, as we always do. All right. I, I, yeah, let's go join this green plane over here. Kind of swing this way. Woo, I think this is a long flight today. I'll go ahead and park myself right here. And we're here. Woo. Cool. All right, if anybody wants to get a shot, come join us behind. All 
I got the Tucson John. I got a Dream Claw. We got to wait till all the people who did not bring the Baron 58 comes down here. Hey, a 350. This was a good choice. Yeah, you can definitely skid in there if you need to. I've actually I turned on the real world weather here, but I don't know exactly how accurate that is. I kind of hold on. Whoa. It's always fun when you get out of the plane, you have to like stretch your legs. And it's like, ah, <laughs> unfortunately, there are no bathrooms built into the plane. Uh, real pilots know what you have to do. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry about that. Give everybody. A this is a really cool picture, though. Nice reverse thrust, by the way. I'll wait until we have a couple more folks in the picture before taking it. Then we'll do a little encore. I know by a nearby lake that um, we're going to go swimming in. Uh, Paulo Castro says, uh, hello, where are you guys? Greetings from Brazil. Uh, uh, welcome. Uh, we are right now, this is uh, Echo November of Bravo Lima. This is uh, Bringland, which is up in uh, Norway. I'll let everybody get caught up. Wait, we got a couple more coming in here. <laughs> this is great. Again, this is why I continue to do these. This is, this is absolutely wild. I always love it when I see everybody here. And zoom out a little bit. Of course, I got the little red one, but, you know, that's how it is. Look how these are slightly bigger because it actually distorts the camera for us. I'll wait for a USAPR to get a little bit closer here. So always carry a plastic bottle. Uh, Maxime, you've got the right idea. <laughs> They're called a relief tube if you're looking for the technical term. <laughs> of course, um, this aircraft itself has got nice leather seats. So um, if you're going to go trying to go bathroom inside of this airplane, uh, I don't know how much I like that idea. All right, I think that'll be a good shot. I'll wait to uh, John Meal uh, comes in and touches up with us. I'll make sure I press the right button for the picture this time. Make sure nobody's on emergency approach here. All right, and take the picture right there. Nice. Thank you again for joining us. As usual, at the end of these, I always like to take a couple moments to uh, see if this is... Oh, somebody had to get in the picture. <laughs> or they'll have to kill us all. Punk. Okay, I retook that picture. You're good. <laughs> all right. So at the end of all these, I always like to do Q&A. Uh, does anybody have any questions on anything, a flight simulator or anything along those related? Um, I know a little bit about other stuff, but again, if you have any specific questions, uh, feel free to ask at this time. Otherwise, I'm going to slowly make my way back up to the runway. I'm going to take off and I'm going to go swimming <laughs> because I can. Space eye. Oh, watch out. It's a really sketch. Uh oh. Safely, safely. How many landings does it count if you bounce? All right, gonna go spin myself around here. Landing gears up, full RPM, mixture set. So in the upcoming weeks, uh, for lack of questions, again, I'll give you guys some, because uh, again, I'm out of sync. I'm about 30 seconds ahead of you. Um, so again, coming up, well, we've got more stuff going with advanced navigation. Again, if you're interested in that kind of thing. Um, afterwards, I'm probably going to do a couple more series on uh, just flying different types of airplanes, kind of going into details with stuff like that. Um, Mr. Mosimir, if you can't see anybody, uh, you got to double check to make sure you're on our server. Uh, we're in the East USA server. Whoa, I just got passed. How do you keep doing that? Have you tried the alpha mod? I'm not sure what the alpha mod is, USAPR. Could you uh, explain what that is? All right, let's go swimming. <laughs> hmm, what well, looks like a nice spot to put this thing in the water? I choose that spot. All right, keeping an eye out for any other questions. Free jet fighter. Oh, the alpha. Oh, I was being silly. No, I have not tried that yet, yeah, USAPR. Um, I'll definitely have to. Uh, the only thing I've actually bought for this one is I have a Piper Arrow because I needed it for a class. Go figure. And I also have the uh, Fiat G91 as well, which is pretty neat. Toro says a crosswind tutorial because your flight videos keep saying the opposite. Um, I could totally be wrong on that, Toro. I'm just doing what I've always done in the simulator. I was always taught to basically I put one wing down into the wind and kind of come sliding across it. Now we'll check it out. All right, let's go swimming. Ooh. Uh, I'm going to have to keep coming around the corner here. Water landing time. Oh, no. There's no room. Uh-oh. Uh... -oh. uh 
I still have energy left. Yeah, I should really redo my landing tutorials. To be honest, they need diagrams to make them nicer. I went with the... <laughs> there it is. I went with the uh, Carinado. Because it was uh, just a little bit simpler. Okay, uh, we have reached the end. I hope everybody had a, a great flight today. Uh, as always, it's uh, super duper fun to get to experience these things with all sorts of big groups of people exploring the world. Um, like I said, next couple of weeks, you're going to see some advanced navigation stuff coming out of me, and uh, then we'll do a bunch of uh, Let's Flies and things like that. Uh, next one is probably going to be somewhere right around two weeks from this point. I don't know exactly what weekend that is. Debating whether or not we're going to do a 7 o'clock or we're going to do a double header. I have to kind of see what we do. But if anybody has any uh, kind of questions as far as stuff like that goes, again, take a look at my community page. I'm usually fairly active on it and i do a pretty like i said on the things along those lines but other than that have an absolutely a wonderful day and afternoon everybody uh, hopefully we'll see you again in the future at some point and uh, like i always say enjoy and uh, stay safe have a good one